There seems to be a lot of misconception about the Gold Saucer. Uh, there are quite a few mounts and quite a few different skins for Glamours that come from there that most people would like to pick up, but it seems to be very, very difficult to earn any kind of MGP. So I've decided to make kind of a weekly guide. You're not going to get super MGP off of this, but it's a nice steady income of several tens of thousands a week. Uh, it takes very little time. I generally spend less than 15 minutes running all of my Gold Saucer stuff for the week. I made sure to wait until uh, the Tactopot tickets reset so that I could show those as well. Uh, I have not done any of my weekly stuff, so I'm going to take you through it and also explain how to get there in the beginning. So you need to be in Ulda to unlock it. Um, I know a lot of people don't necessarily hang out in Ulda, so I figured I would start here at the Aetherite Crystal where you would come in. Now generally, if it's your first time going to the saucer, you need to unlock it. Up here, there will be a gentleman called a well-heeled youth, somewhere in this vicinity. He will have a blue bubble to unlock quest bubbles and it will say something along the lines of it could happen to you. Now that's going to unlock the part where they send you to the airship docks because that's generally how you get there the first time. So we're gonna go ahead and go through the airship like normal. Now once you've unlocked it you can actually cheat to set your first setting up here to Thanalin and your second setting you can go straight to the saucer and just hit the big crystal. But if it's your first time, that's not particularly helpful. So we're going to go ahead and jump to the airship landing here. Once you've unlocked all of the crystals in Ulda, you'll be able to have these set up as well. So it'll have you do some talking down here, and then you can actually set up your passage to the gold saucer. So we're going to go ahead and go. Some of these gates are very good for very little time invested. Normally though I don't try to target fate times, they happen every 20 minutes, um, real time. I don't try to target those, I will only do them opportunistically, they're not part of my regular rotation. So once you land, there should be a guy somewhere along this stretch here with another blue quest. That one will take you around to talk to everyone. Make sure while you're running around to talk to everyone that you hit all of the little crystals so that you can get around quickly here. It will also give you, more importantly, a couple of envelopes that get you started off with MGP. It doesn't give you very much at all, but we can make it work. As you can see, I've got a fair amount of MGP myself right now. This is after I spent the million for the Fenrir amount. Yes, I know there are quite a few players that have significantly more than I do, but again, this is a low time investment version. If you run out, you can always come here to trade up to 500, gil or 500 MGP worth. Once you're over that, you can't buy any more. Another thing to keep in mind are once you've unlocked Triple Triad, you will get cards from bosses. Now once you've used a card, you will get this message if you get it again. The card has already been used. Don't throw these away, guys. If you come up to the Triple Triad Trader, you can sell your extra cards that you already have for MGP. So there's an easy 1500 I didn't have to do anything for other than my normal Q running. The next thing that I like to do is come around here to the Cactopot, Mini Cactopot Broker. Now this one you can do daily. You can get up to three per day. Uh, they are totally worth the effort. Even if you get the lowest score possible, you will earn more than you spent on the ticket. So we're going to go ahead and buy one, and I'll show you the way that I do these. I'm sure there's a better way, but it works for me. So they always give you one random number somewhere, and here are your payouts. The highest is 10,000. It is not possible to get 10,000 on every ticket. That depends on how the numbers fall out. You must have one, two, and three in a row to get a 10,000. So what I do is start in the corners, because that's usually... So there's a two. 
So we know it's not this line because there's an 8. And we know it's not this line because there's a 5. So it might be this line. There's a 1 and a 2. There's a fairly good chance that that's a 3. So we're going to go ahead and try it. It was a 9. We only get 108. But we only spent 10. So we don't really have to worry about it. Here, we're going to do it again. So we've got an 8. So we know this this line's out, this line's out, and this line's out. So we want to check these. 4, a 3. So what do we have over here? We have a 2. If that's a 1, we're golden. It is not. But we still made 5 times what we spent. So we're okay with that. And third and final. It's a 9, so this line's out, and this line's out. So we're going to try that one, that one. Oh, maybe. Nope. So this line's going to be one of our major options here. And 720. Really good return. Not the 10,000 we were hoping for. But as you can see, this card, the 2's up here, it is physically not possible to get a 6. So none of these could have won 10,000. And that's okay. There, we have other methods available. So at that point, I would generally, if it's, so the drawing for the large Cactopot tickets happens once a week. It happens Saturday night. So I generally wait until Sunday to do it. So if we go up to the Cactopot board here, these are another one where even if you don't win, if you get every single number wrong, you will get around a thousand, whereas the most expensive card costs 500. That's still double your money. So you would come over here to pick up a card, or three. You can, you can hold up to three. She's not going to give me any because I haven't turned in my last week, so I wanted to show you guys what the rewards were. So I got 1150. I got no numbers right, and I still got 1150. So we're going to claim our next two. 1150. Unfortunately, 1150 is the common prize. So we're going to come over here and get ourselves ready for next week. So your first ticket, and I always do random. So our first ticket is 100 MGP. Our second ticket is 150 MGP. I thought the third was 500, but I may be wrong. Nope, it's only 200. So I actually made quite a bit more profit than I thought I did. And then you're cut off at 3 until it rolls Saturday at 10 p.m. Eastern because this pulls off of your local time. I'm in the Eastern time zone. So once you've got that, we start with the challenges, and this is where you really make the stuff. So if you go into your challenge log, and go into your golden saucer, complete three mini games will give you a thousand, and 100 MGP will give you 1500. Now those are super easy to do, I brought my machinist so we can move a little faster. I usually use this game because it's not that difficult. Now one of the things that the, the readout doesn't tell you, so it only costs one MGP to play. You can win zero, so it's possible to lose MGP at this, but you're losing one at a time. If you win, you either win 10, 15, or 25 MGP. Completely worth it. So the thing that they don't tell you is the more times it cycles down here, the slower it starts to move, which makes it a little bit easier. I usually wait for five. And then you try to get it as close to that purple line as possible. So I won 25. So that's one of three and one of four, or well, 25% of the 100. So we go ahead and wait for another five cycles. So this next one will get me the 1,000, and hopefully, if I do well enough, the one after that will get me the 1,200. So if you look down here, there's my 1,000 for the trial. For size, doesn't matter. Now we should be at 75 in our winnings, so we're going to go ahead and wait for the next one. And I missed. So we're going to have to do one extra because we only got 15 that time. 
And that's okay. It takes a little bit of practice, but that's why you wait. Wait for it to cycle. You can't wait too long. You do have a timer up here. And there we go. So I just... Oh, 1,500, not 1,200. I'm sorry. So we've done those two challenges, so we're good there. Now... Oops, that's not a challenge there. How is it? We go back into our challenge log. Gates only come up every 20 minutes, so getting five of them, you're going to be here for at least an hour. Uh, chocobo races, they're another good route. You get some for winning, you can get some titles, you can get some fun stuff. I love chocobo racing, but it's not conducive to just getting these out of the way to try and get your prizes. Triple Triad is super fun if you're good with numbers and you have a good collection of cards, but again, the games take quite a while. It's not conducive to fast MGP games. Uh, Lord Vermilion, though, that's where it's at. So there is a way through the tutorials. This says play Vermilion three times. Playing the, the tutorials actually counts towards this. So our goal here is just to power through these. Now your first time through, you're going to want to learn a little bit about the game. So you're going to want to do the tutorials anyway, I would imagine. The other nice thing is Lord Vermilion uses minions. The minions that you get. Oh, right. So let's go to the entrance square and I will show you how to get downstairs because it is not part of the tour. So if you come over here, there's the lift operator hanging out. And we are in the southwest corner of the square. So he'll take you downstairs for free. And the chocobo races are down here as well for when you want to get into that. So if you're interested in chocobo races, you would go forward. Well, we want Vermilion, so we're going to come this way. Now there are two more mini games down here that you can use for the previous achievement, but they are much, much more difficult than Cuffaker. So if you don't have any minions and you're worried about not being able to do this early game, that's okay. You can come over to the minion trader, and they have some for guilt. Now the only ones that are super important are the Mammoth and the Cherry Bomb. Those are the only two that we're going to wind up doing after you get through the first two tutorials. For speed reasons. And this is, again, some of the neat MGP rewards you can get. You can get a black kitten. And I have black cats. I love black kittens. There are quite a few different pets in here that you can earn. They look expensive, but you'll see. So you'll come over here to any table, and you go to Vermilion Challenge. Now your first is your tutorial, your second is another walkthrough. You have to do those to get to the third. As you can see, I've never actually finished the fourth. So the first two take quite a while. Your, your setup on this is going to be a pain in the butt. But once it's set up, number three, you can do in about 30 seconds, using only the mammoth and the bombs. So we're going to go ahead and start three, and I'm going to show you the easy way, because the first two hold your hand. Oops. Now, I'm sure there's a million and two different ways to do this and do it quickly, but this works for me and it takes less than 30 seconds, so I'm okay with it. So you've got three gates to play with, and you'll get all... So there was a bit of technical difficulty there, and my uh, recording studio crashed, so we're going to restart. I finished the first match, but we're going to go ahead and show you this, the second match of five. You have to do five to get full rewards. So we're going to walk you through the second match here, which is going to proceed exactly like the first. A minute and a half, and we're going to get everything. So we're going to go ahead and tilt up, give ourselves the angle we want, and zoom. We're on B, so we're going to spit out two bombs. We're going to go to A, we're going to spit out two mammoths. C, two mammoths. And then back to B, because that's where we spam the rest from. Now to get around, you right click to turn your camera, you WASD to move your camera. And go ahead and spam those mammoths. Get them moving, make sure they're in the red rings. 
try to keep them out of the blue or they will try to fight the guys in the blue and that is bad these guys are not made for fighting they're made for crystal bashing so we send the bombs over here when they break the shield it takes you an extra less break of the crystal to get it to actually go so the crystal has multiple life bars and each time you hear it crack it's going to be one of those life bars as you can see, the rate that's going down is not the rate it's going down up here. Still going down plenty fast though. There's two. Third is well on its way. You can send them over here, but it's going to be broke before they get there. And that's that. A minute 31 seconds. Now that's my second, so if I scroll up, you can see that I actually got 5,000 for my first. You'll get none for your second, but your third will give you another big infusion. Your fourth, you will get nothing, and your fifth, you will get a huge infusion. So we're going to go ahead and start this again, just to show you that it's the same every time. We only progress to three, and then we stick there because it's so quick. A minute and a half times five, you're not looking at a very big time investment here. This is going to be the biggest part of it, but it's once a week. You're still looking at less than a dungeon. We're going to go ahead and summon our bombs, our mammoths, our mammoths, and get ready to spit out more bombs. Or more mammoths, rather. Sorry. Now we just wait for the countdown. Go. These two. I'm going to send them up here. And just max that bar out with mammoths. I put them in the middle because it's easier for me to direct them where I want them to go that way. Honestly, it doesn't really matter where you put them, I just feel like it get a little bit faster times out of the middle. Might just be me, it could be all in my head, maybe I'm retarded, who knows. Once your pictures over here start going gray, you're not really worried about spamming any extras. Because nobody should die, this is so quick. So they busted that shield that's going to make the red go down faster. Now any non-friendlies in this red ring is going to slow you down in the middle crystal. It's usually last to go for that reason, because you guys want to fight them. So see how we have these two inside the red ring? They're going to keep us from breaking stuff. So we need to take the whole horde and point them in the right... Oh, see there, they moved. So now we're good. So that's the first. That's the second. And they're all out of the red. Now they're back in the red, because of course they are. They only screw with you when you're trying to record. Come on, guys. We'll just take them all down here and whip up on these guys to clear out. Now they scatter. And our guys will go back to beating on the crystal. All done. So that took an extra 30 seconds because the AI was not being cooperative. So now you've seen kind of an exchange and kind of the other side. So that was just for completing a certain number of challenges. That's guild, not MGP. Don't get too excited. And honestly, after a while, 10,000 gil is kind of meh. You can watch the cutscene the first couple of times, but it's the same every time, so I don't really bother anymore. Kind of like dungeons. So 
So you can only do two from each at the start. Like if I try to put more here, it tells me I can't. That's why I start the way that I do. So there we go, two. Mm, it helps if you remember to. As you can see, very low effort, very high reward for MGP. And particularly if you want the nice black cat or some of the armor, some of the rewards, I recommend you go and look. There's some really cool stuff in there. The Fenrir mount from one of the dungeons, the last boss in one of the dungeons, is available. He costs a million. That one took me the better part of two months to earn up, but I wasn't just doing this. So after this I will show you, after this particular run, I will show you some other ways that you can earn MGP as well that don't involve the saucer at all. They're slower, but they're available. I still feel like this isn't that much of an investment realistically. 10 minutes of your time once a week, that's nothing. And maybe my time's not worth as much as yours, that's entirely possible. They're not even going to make it to the crystal. There we go. So, a minute 28 that time. So you've seen both extremes. Now I'm not going to make you sit through all of my runs, I just wanted to show you that it's pretty damn consistent. Now one of the other things that you can do once you've gotten that far in the story is get your Wondrous Tales book. Now if you look at the rewards for Wondrous Tales, if you get a single line, you can get 30,000 MGP. If you get two lines, you can get 130,000 MGP. Because this says 50, but it actually gives you two of them. And you can also pick this one. So you add the two together, 50 and 50 is 100, plus 30 is 130. Now the last one is where it's at. If you can get three lines, it's a hell of a hard choice as to whether you take the MGP or you take the gold certificate. There's some stuff that can only be purchased in this game with the gold certificate. But 20 of these is actually 1 million MGP. So you're going to multiply it by 2, which would give you 100,000, and then multiply it by 10, which would give you 1 million. So that's a hard choice. I think the first time, if I ever get one, and I try, is I'm going to go for this guy. Now something else to remember about your Wondrous Tales that people don't always pay attention to is your second chances. So what you should do is you can repeat for one point something that was easy. Like I, I do my 90 dungeons every day, so I can repeat that and get one every day. But you also have this shuffle down here. Now you can only shuffle up to 7. So 8 and 9, you're stuck. So what I do is I get right up to 7 and I dump all of my points trying to get at least one line. Now it is possible to get 2, but ideally, to, or possible to get 3, I'm sorry. But ideally you want one down and one diagonal, because that's going to share this hole. So that's going to make it 7 to get 2 lines. And then from there, any line but this line is going to be good to finish off for your third line because you're at seven you only have two more possible stickers this would take three because they share this line or this this spot so you can get and they would have this one as well so one and two would give you nine one and two would give you nine one and two would give you nine now that also works other ways like if you went this way and this way so any line except this bottom line would work for you Basically, you want a diagonal and a straight, and then you're going to wind up with a vertical or a horizontal that is not the one with three stickers left. I've never gotten a three, but it is possible. People have. That's the other way to possibly get them. Then there's an event going on currently in Ulda that you can get special tombstones. They're these tombstones of scripture. And you can actually buy the 50,000 MGP tickets for 30 of them. So that's another option, but those are not up very often. That's how I actually got my Fenrir mount. That's a minion guide, that's not going to help. So if we look at our mount guide, I have the Fenrir mount. 
Right there he is. And I got him by doing the last event on top of this. So just make sure to give these guys a shot once a week. You'll be in good shape. You can even check the challenge logs to see what rewards you'll get. So one more and I'll get another 12,000. So you saw what I came in here at. Here's where I'm going out at and I'll actually be at 85, 285,000 when I leave. I hope this has been helpful to those new players that don't know how to abuse the hell out of the system. And uh, I'm going to try to do some other things for you too. So take it easy. Have a good time. Don't forget to have fun.